Hello, unstoppable real estate investors. I'm Rayana Starr, and I'm with our, our guest today, Tim Billions. What a great last name to have <laughs> as a real estate investor. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and um, I'm on a trip right now. I'm in Arizona because I'm going to be doing an event here. And so I'm in a hotel room. Anyway, um, Tim, how did you hear about this um, podcast? Um, Facebook. Facebook? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, I just wanted to ask you, you know, just uh, you're, you, you work with wholesalers, you teach wholesalers, but let's, let's start with your history. What were you doing before real estate? What was Tim doing before you became a real estate investor? Oh man. Well again, Rihanna, like I just want to again thank you for having me. But um life was very different before real estate. Um I'm I am a guy who was uh like doing some things I wasn't supposed to be doing. Um was in the streets for a, a very long time and uh all I've ever known is selling drugs before real estate. You know, I was selling drugs, I've been arrested 17 times and I was sentenced to 10 years in prison. So um, during this incarceration, I probably read maybe 400 financial, personal development. It started with like a lot of religious material and history and stuff like that. And then one day I stumbled across a book um, called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And that book just changed my life. Like I read that book, um, the author Robert Kiyosaki. After I read that book, I read all the rest of his books, um, just some Trump books, and just got into all, like I said, maybe four, 400 finance, personal development, and you know those type of books. I kept seeing in the real estate books, they were talking about this strategy where you could flip houses without using cash or credit. So, and I never saw the term wholesaling, but they just kept saying that you could do this. And that's what made me want to get into real estate because I, you know, coming from the streets i'm like you know it, it seemed like a, a just a different hustle so if i could make money illegally i felt like this was something i could do so i started studying mostly real estate and just um you know came home and was ready to do it so that's how i kind of like got into real estate All right. wow i love your story do you know um bryce mckinley or ben lovero i know ben lovero Yes. Yeah, Ben has a similar story. He was yeah. Mm -hmm. a criminal. You guys probably have talked about that. Same thing with Bryce <laughs> McKinley. Yeah. And then they found God, became Christians, but then they, the same thing, they used their time in prison to transform. And it's quite extraordinary. And, and now they're both super successful. Bryce McKinley is a multi, multi, probably decamillionaire. He's got like eight business, like five, five or six businesses that are doing seven to eight figures a year. So very inspiring story and good for you. I just caught the tail end of Shawshank Shank Redemption last night, <laughs> got into my, my hotel room, movie. which is one of my favorite movies. Oh, and I know favorite it's a favorite movie of a lot of men. <laughs> and the point I got to, because uh, I was traveling all day yesterday, and the point I got to in the movie where I tuned in was right towards the end. He's just coming out of the sewage pipe and gets to the river. It's pouring and he's just like free. And then uh, Morgan Freeman's character gets out and the movie, you know, ends with them connecting on that beach and San Juan Taneo. Um, but Anyway, I am so, I just want to acknowledge how um, impressed and appreciative I am. And um, thank you, thank you. what's the word? I don't know if it's grateful, um, but Might be my so, <laughs> so glad that you used your incarceration time to better yourself and to change the path of your life. I mean, literally, right? I made that decision 
within my first 30 days in prison, I made the conscientious decision, like, I'm going to treat this like college. I knew I had to do almost close to nine years. I said, man, I'm, I'm going to treat this whole thing like college. And that's what I did. Like I, I thought thinking. about that, that if I ever was arrested and put in jail or prison, one, I'd be terrified. But two, um, that that's what I would do. I would just Absolutely. become a, a ferocious student and use the time to just learn a lot. Um, you know, and I just wonder what the what the percentage of the population do that in the prison are are there 75 percent go back so yeah that'll tell you. <laughs> that'll tell you you know so yeah i'm one of the, the few well few and and kids. especially with all the arrests you had the history you had the likelihood probably people gave up on you but you didn't Absolutely. give up on yourself how Absolutely. many years ago has it been since you got out and you transformed your life. Last week, September 1st, made six years. Right <laughs> on. I love it. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Good for you. Thank you. So Thank you. let's like that journey of studying and, you know, you're not the first guest who's come on to my podcast. Well, it's not really a podcast because it's a video and we're live on Facebook, but everyone calls it a podcast. But my show <laughs> is um, Who Said Rich Dad, Poor Dad was a book that transformed their lives. Changed my and then how about Cash Flow Quadrant? That's like Rich Dad, Poor, poor Dad is like the entry book to get your mind right. right. But Cash Flow Quadrant and how about Michael Gerber's book, E-Myth Revisited? Yeah. Yeah. I just read that again, maybe six months ago, just to kind of revisit it and love that book too. Yeah, that's one of those you got to reread. But I think I'm going to reread Rich Dad, Poor Dad and Cashflow Quadrant because it's been many, many years. And there are certain books that I've got on my list that are books that I have said to myself, you're going to read these every year to just remember. Now there's one I'm reading again right now, and it's really good for me as a coach because I coach a lot of people on this and that's Traction by Gin, Gino Wickman. Love that book. Yeah, because he's really laying out the details of a plan. Like in E-Myth, Michael Gerber keeps it really simple in the allegory with Right. the pie shop gal and stuff and you know technician manager entrepreneur and that you really have to develop processes and then systems. train people in your processes and systems what i like about gino wickman's book traction is he is really laying out a very specific way of doing it that absolutely makes sense and he's breaking down every step i mean how much time he spent on the book just on core values and vision was, I loved it as a coach because I think a lot of people think those softer skills like core values, your your vision, what, what your motivation is are like woo-woo, but they really are the gas in the tank. They are what, they are the foundation. They're what fuels why you're doing what you're doing. Do you want to say anything about that for yourself? Um, no, but you're going to make me go out there and grab traction so I can read it again because it's been about two years. Good. So yeah. So I'm going to grab it again. I just got to, um, because you spoke about being a coach. Um, I just got, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Alex Hermosi. Oh, absolutely. You got his new Love book. him. He's, He's like the ninja. marketing ninja absolutely. badass. Yeah. I just got his new book. It just came in right before I got on yeah. here. I just picked it up from my doorstep just now. Opened it up. Got it sitting right there. So getting ready to get started on that. But traction is going to be next. Soon enough after I finish this, and we'll read traction. All right. Again. So what I want to, can I make a suggestion when you're going through that book? Um, did you read his other one? A hundred million dollar. Yeah. And it, Jim Coach. Um, Jim. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. It's, it's. When you're reading a book like Alex, who's basically writing about a pretty in-depth marketing strategy process, I find maybe going through the book once to just get the whole thing, 
but then going back and implementing as you go through the book. Implement as you go through. Otherwise, it's overwhelming. You're looking at this big process because he really goes into a lot of detail on each step and then details on each step, you know, because he's pretty, he's pretty intense and detailed is try going through the book, implementing and applying what you're learning while you're going through it. I appreciate that. Yeah. So talk about like you get out of prison. Did you start did you start implementing anything? Were you able to when you were in prison on kind of starting to set up shop to do real estate? Or were you just, what, what, when he hit rich, rich dad, poor dad, after reading hundreds of personal growth, religious, wealth building, money, what was it about rich dad, poor dad that was so above and beyond all the others? And what did it do? What, like, what did it motivate you to do when you read it? Um, with Rich Dad, Poor Dad mindset was the main thing. Like, that's why to anybody I coach or teach, I always recommend that book first. Like, I do. Mom, yeah, that mind. and E-Myth. E-Myth. I like the compound effect, too. That's one of my first. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Ones, first ones, too. But it's just the mindset that it, it like, already I was... I was already doing a lot of business, but it was just illegally. So when I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it just changed my mindset to where you can do this on a legal aspect. <laughs> you know? So that's really what it was, the whole mindset shift. I've read the book probably like eight or nine times now. And when I read it now, it's not so as profound as, as it was back then, but I just know it, it was the mindset shift is what it did for me. And it just, it made me, really started looking into financial literacy because until that time I had been in prison two years before I read it. And until that time, it was just a lot of history, um, religious stuff, you know, stuff like that. Cause you know, I don't, you, you probably never been to jail, but if, if you ever go to jail, you get religious real quick. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you try to find God real fast. So that's what I was doing at the beginning. But then I stumbled across the book and it's the rich dad, poor dad, somebody actually let me borrow it. Cause I kept hearing about it. So I, I saw this dude with it one day and I, I saw it, I was like, let me, let me borrow the book. And it just, it changed everything. Um, so, so, it, so then you still were in prison for seven more years. Yeah, um, that was 2011, six, six more years. About six so you got out before. for good behavior after eight? Um, eight and a half, they, in South Carolina, they make us do 85% of the sentence. Okay. So oh, you're in <laughs> South Carolina? Where are you? In Charleston. You're in Charleston. I love Charleston. Yeah, I'm up in Asheville, North Carolina. We'll have to meet sometime. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So so you read this book two years in and you've still got six and a half years. So what was that like? Like were you just visualizing and planning out yeah. your life for when you got out and Absolutely. putting a plan together talk about that i did um you know six and a half more years of just studying making plans um i came home ready to, to take over the world had you studied a bunch of real estate stuff by then you yeah know, i did i did i had made real estate plans and everything but to be honest Rihanna, when i came home like i sold drugs for a, a, a lot of years right and i understand the damage that I've done to a lot of people and to a lot of people's families. I take full responsibility for that. You know, I, that's Did something. Did you go around and make amends or anything? I didn't, but I understand how I do now by helping as many people as I can. That's, there you that's go. That's, it's not an, I'm sorry. It's actions. Right. Right. So that's what yes, that's yeah. yes, I do by trying to help people, but I understand karma. I'm a big believer in karma. So I know that the way I destroyed a lot of families, I came home and my family was destroyed. Um, I have five daughters. And when I left, I came home and their mom was strung out on drugs herself. So I look at that as the karma of, you know, of me doing what I did came back to me. Drugs affected my family. 
my kid's mother was strung out on drugs when I came home and I had to get custody of three of my teenage daughters as soon as I came home. Now this is me with no money, really no place to stay, no car, no nothing. And as a convicted felon, that must have been challenging to win that case. I, it wasn't even a case. Like she just was so strung out that it, it wasn't like I, because her grandmother raised them. I mean, not her grandmother, my children's grandmother raised them the whole time I was gone. And she was tired. My second day home, she told me, Tim, I'm tired. Like, so I had to get the girls. I had to get the girls, raise them by myself, still raising them by myself. You know, they pretty much grown now, but had to raise them by myself while building up this real estate thing. So to be honest, when I first came home, I was ready to do the real estate. I had all the plans, but then life just slapped me in the but face. But it's just like you, you weren't going to make money right away. So you had to survive no. and get out no. there and figure no. it out. What did you do? I had a connect a guy who put me on to selling sneakers. So I started doing that, um, started selling sneakers and kind of like started dibbling in the real estate a little bit. Like, you know, with wholesaling, you can get started off looking for vacant houses. So I was kind of doing that a look, just a tiny bit while selling the sneakers. Dipping your um, toe in the water. Right, right. You know what I mean? So I'm going to these meetings. I'm on YouTube every day, four or five hours. Like, you know, I'm lear still learning any little free seminar I could find or cheap ones because I didn't have, I was barely getting by with the, with the sneaker money. And it's so crazy, Rihanna, because I had, I still got friends that's on the other side of the tracks. And when I came home, they were ready to, here get you go. Get you right back into the groove. I could have, I could have got That must have been groove. difficult to get, because no. you had to create a whole new life. Your I whole. Mean, well, yes, it was difficult, but it was, it was so, it was, I couldn't go back to the streets, right? Because with the girls, mom strung out, if something happened to me and they lost me again, now they have nothing. And I just, I, I couldn't let that happen. So I chose to start doing this real estate thing, selling sneakers. Nine months of me trying to get this thing done, because it took me 11 months to get my first house flip. Nine months of me trying, somebody breaks into my car one night, steals all my stuff. I had just um, bought like maybe $2,000 worth of sneakers and sweatsuits and stuff oh, like that. Oh, shoot. And they took everything. They took everything. It's a, it was a four and a half hour drive because I was going to Atlanta to get the stuff. It's a four and a half hour drive to come back. On the way back, I get pulled over and get a $250 speeding ticket. Now, this would mean like $100 left to my name because then it took all my, my stuff. I just spent all my money getting more stuff. I got like $100 in my name to get back home. Like, that's all I got. I get pulled over, $250 speeding ticket. Further along the ride, one of my headlights go out. So I said, this is God way of telling me, go ahead and leave this alone. <laughs> like, leave this sneaker stuff alone and kind of like go harder on the real estate. And that's what I did. I came back home. I borrowed some money from one of my friends so I could pay bills, have, get some groceries and stuff for the girls. And I just went hard every day looking for houses, calling people, writing letters. I was posting on social media, send me addresses to vacant houses. I'll pay you $500 referral fee if I buy, which I didn't even have the $500. I just was saying when I flip the house, I'll pay you $500. Right. And finally, uh, one of my ex-prison roommates sent me an address to a vacant house. I am getting that and the flipping that made $10,000. This was 11 months of trying. I finally made $10,000 on the first house. And then in the next seven months, I made another $112,000. And that's the I freaking love the story of okay. like perseverance and resilience and your commitment to staying on the right side of the track for your family. So your girls are your motivation. Absolutely. Absolutely. And how how is your relationship with them now? Because that, that there must have been some tough Man. times in those relationships. Man, it's, not having money can cause a big strain on a relationship with kids. Man, like you know, it was years I couldn't buy school clothes. Uh, one of my daughters, like I feel so bad about this because this kind of this caused a big. Uh, we great now, but this one a, a major thing that caused a strain in our relationship was. I was borrowing money to pay bills at one point. And one of my daughters was getting ready to graduate and she needed $500 to pay for some graduation stuff. And she told me like the day before it was due. 
and I had just spent all my money on bills, money that I had just borrowed to pay the bills. So I didn't want to go back to my friend and be like, bro, I need 500 more dollars. He just gave me thousands of dollars, you know what I mean? And I'm like, I need yeah. 500 more. So I told her I, I couldn't do it. And she actually had to borrow the money from some of her aunts her grandmother. They put it all together and sent it to her. But it actually caused her to kind of resent me a little bit because she didn't she didn't understand. I wasn't telling them, baby, daddy's struggling. I'm, we on food stamps. I, you know, I, I wasn't explaining all of that to them. So they didn't understand. I just borrowed money to pay all the bills. I didn't have the five hundred dollars. So that was just a, a huge strain at that point. But we great now. Um, a couple of them have moved. Well, one of them have moved out. She on her own um, in college, you know, doing her thing. I still got uh, two more with me. And um, we good now. Wow. What a story, Tim. So talk about, okay, so you went, took you 11 months to make your first 10,000 and get your first mm-hmm. deal. And then in the next seven months, she did another 112. Um, right. So talk about that. Talk about that from the first one to the, the rest. Like what happened once you got that first one? What 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 went through your mind, and then what 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 was your process that that you were able to increase your your you know your income by a hundred percent? At that point, it was a lot no by a thousand percent. Yeah, it was a lot of hustle. To be honest, um, yeah, everything came from driving for dollars. Like all, ah. all of those houses came from me riding around, finding vacant houses. I did a lot of driving. You were a hungry hunter. Was I? I was sending, I was calling people, texting people, sending out letters every single you day. You hustled, man. Yeah, yeah, I did. Well, you knew how to do that. You know, you have some great transferable skills from your time on the street because yeah. you were surviving then and you were learning how to survive in a different way but you had some transferable skills that really served you. Absolutely. I always hear that drug dealers are great businessmen because you're able to sell something that you can't even market. And when you think about it like that, like you're able to sell a product that you can't market. Like you have to be a good businessman in order to, in order to do that. So like you said, there are a lot of transferable skills from that. You still run in a business. Like I made six figures in the drug game. So you're still running a six figure business. It's just now the prison time, I was able to read the books and learn how to take the hustle and incorporate that hustle and make it, you know, into something legit. Right. Something legit. So take us on the journey from that first wholesale to what happened in the next several months. You know, once you, what went through your mind, once you closed and cashed that first wholesale check talk about that because that's really where the biggest win is isn't it that first one yes yes it was a relief first of all from 11 months like oh my god this works i can do it yeah yes relief i can pay the bills like you know so that was kind of the first thought but then the fact that i know i can do it You know what I mean? I know I can do it. That was really the biggest thing. Like, I know I can do it. And I think that's what gave me that extra drive to, like, go harder, ride around every day. You know, I'm I'm riding around every day and I'm listening to all these podcasts and these seminars and a lot of Jim Rohn and Brian Tracy and um, who was my favorite guy named who just passed away. Um, Tony Robbins. He just passed away. Zig Uh, Ziglar. No, uh, uh, Bob Bob Proctor. Bob Proctor. Yeah. Like it was these guys and just a lot of riding around. Like to be honest, without those guys, I don't know if I would have if I would have persevered the whole eleven months. Because a lot of people would have gave up in eleven months. But listening to so many, and Tony Robbins is one of them too. Listening to so many successful people talk about how hard the journey is. If the journey not hard, you're not going in the right direction. It's gonna be tough. It's going you can't quit. You. And those guys are the ones who really kind of like kept me persevering, just going so hard in those next seven months to really, you know, make that make that money like how I did. So you cashed that first check. How long was it before you got your next one? It was two months. All right. So that must have been 
that that's testing you a little more, isn't it? It was. It was because I actually ran out of money again. But I I was in the process of still to this day my biggest deal because my second one was sixty five thousand. So a wholesale fee. A wholesale fee of sixty. Wow, there must have been a lot of meat on those bones. Yes, yes, it was a very motivated seller. Like she lived two hours away from the house. She had inherited from her parents. She was older, living on ten acres of land, so she didn't want the house. And to be honest, like she was in her like late six, mid sixties. She told me she, was, she said, "I don't even. I didn't even like my parents. I'm just the last living sibling, last living kid. I inherited the house. I don't want it." So. When I asked her how much she want for the house, she was like, I don't know, uh, 60, 65? I said, well, let's meet in the middle and do 63. We agreed 63. I gave her a $10 deposit. And then I a found a $10 deposit? A $10 deposit, because I was, I was broke. And I found a buyer for $129,000. It was a $66,000 assignment. I paid, he wanted me to pay the, uh, the closing costs. I did that and what we would $65,000 check. Well, that kept you going for a while, right? Absolutely. absolutely. How long did it take to get to the next one? A few weeks. And, and then so after weeks. that, you were rocking and rolling? Yeah. I, I, when I got to 65000 I took some. I took a course that was about six grand. And um, it kind of taught me how to start putting some systems in place that I wouldn't have to be riding around hustling you know, so much no more. Yeah, I mean, driving for dollars and your hustle is commendable, but if you can learn how to get, get generate leads and not, yeah, you, you know, in a more that. efficient way and a faster way. Right, so right. Yeah, you what can't did you, you driving for dollars? Yeah, you still do driving for dollars? I, I do, I do now, you know, when I, when I have time, I still do. I'm actually thinking about going tomorrow, <laughs> going tomorrow just to do, because I still hey. do it. It's the foundation of your success. Why not? So what's your what are you doing now to generate leads? Are you buying um, lists or what's your approach? Yeah, I got two cold callers. Um, you know, buy the list, just get it to them, um, and let them do the calling. I'm actually getting ready to hire um a full-time texter because you know uh, with a lot of these lists you get, like they said the you're gonna hit an average of 10%. So if I got a list of 10, 20,000. So 10,000 lists, I'm only hitting 1,000 people that I'm contacting. So it's still 9,000 people on those lists that, you know. Now, are those cold callers, have you trained them where they're actually making the offers for you? Um, No, I'm still like doing kind of like the follow-up stuff, making the offers and stuff like that. Um, so is that the next step is to get a lead manager or yeah, I tried like, an acquisition? I'm a partner now, and we okay. tried last year. I just didn't like it. Like we did in 2021, we did over $400,000 in wholesale deals. So last year we did, and that's what, with me doing the, the follow-up calls like lead manager. Last year we hired somebody and it just, it just, you know, I know the market changed a little bit too, but it just didn't go like how I thought it was going to go. So well, right the market now, changed a lot across the country in most is. markets, not all, but um, a lot of people that I coach, there was definitely, you know, halfway through 2022, a kind of with the interest rates going up and inventory and things. Yeah, it, th yeah. there was definitely, you so know, it was a mixture of both. But yeah. I, just, I, I said, let me take the take the reins a little bit again and maybe we're not maybe we're definitely going to hire somebody else well you know with all those books you you read that maybe it's just how you're you're documenting your processes how you're onboarding them and training them but at some point letting go of control to get more freedom yeah. it's it's at some point you're going to you're going to stunt your growth if you're not working your way out of that job. I get it. That, But if that's where you're like in traction, he talks about your unique abilities. I call it your superpowers. If that's where your superpowers are in the company, in the business, and you like it, great, you do it. But there's a point where it's going to 
limit how you can scale your business. Definitely gonna try again though. Just yeah, you know, like you said, it could it could have been the market too, but it just and it could have been just it wasn't the right person in the right seat on the bus. Right, right, right you know. Right. So you, you gotta know, kiss you a lot of frogs before you find your princess. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, so as so, right now, I'm, I'm doing it, but definitely gonna find somebody uh, very soon. What would you say has been as if we haven't already covered this, but what would you say has been your biggest challenge in this business? Actually learning how, the e going back to the email, like learning how to turn it into an actual business. Like the biggest, that has been my biggest challenge, even, you know, still like going from that hustler riding around because if you ride around for seven, eight months and you make $122,000 in eight months, right? So just from riding around, you kind of, want to continue doing this is, is working yeah if it's not broke don't fix it and right that you know for you. right but again going back to all the books all the courses all the listening you have to learn how to scale the business but driving right. for dollars unless i'm hiring people to drive is not scalable me just doing it so that has been the biggest like challenge well me. bill tim you know let's schedule a call and I'll, i'm happy to that's what i do as a coach is I work with real estate investors who are already established. They started off like you. They learned the business. They hustled. They got going. They're 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 successful, but now they want to scale. Like it's one thing to grow. Growing is learning a skill, moving on. You know, you grew from eleven months getting your first deal, and then getting your next two months later, and then after that, you were growing. Scaling is transforming the way you do your business so that you can expand your capacities by automating and delegating. And that requires a certain approach to the business and a mindset shift. And I know you know it all because you've read all the right books, but I'm happy to you and I one-on-one -on -one just have a conversation with you about that, exchange some ideas, if it makes sense, possibly work together even. Um, because that's what I do is I'm helping my, my niche. I've found my superpowers helping entrepreneurs, real estate investors get organized. And I take, take them through four stages of their business, the getting started, getting moving, gaining momentum, and then growing and scaling. And it you're you're in a different mindset and and focused on different things at, at each of those four stages in your business. Getting started, you're dreaming, you're setting up the you're setting up shop, you're the branding, it's fun, you're excited. And then getting moving is okay, time to face reality. I got a hustle. Right. That get, getting moving is all about hustle. You got the hustle, dude. You know, and then the next two stages, gaining momentum is the hustle stage is a lot of work, not a lot of payoff, 11 months of not being paid, but of hustling. But then the third stage, gaining momentum is, okay, we're starting to reap rewards from the hustle and it's starting to really flow in and it can create problems because you're not like ready you have breakdowns because you don't have the processes and systems in place. So gaining momentum is about getting things so that things can keep flowing. It's about getting your marketing and your operations and starting to shift from technician into manager role. Right, right. And then scaling and growing and scaling is all about taking things to the next level, stepping back and looking at your business completely differently so that you can completely automate everything and your business is you're in the right side of the cash flow quadrant. You know, what I love about this business is you are a business owner and an investor as a real estate investor, you know? So, you know, just hit me up, like text me or DM me or, or um, email me. I, I love to work with you. You're my you are my ideal client. You've got the hustle. You just need someone to 
guide you and help you get organized. So if, if that's of interest to you, because if you're coaching people, you're limited in how far you can take them. And I'm happy to coach you and share what I do so you can pay that forward and help more people. So if that's of interest to you, just let me know, DM me. Um, In fact, if you want to write my phone number down, um, you can just text me. It's 858. Eight 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 six seven six three, Rayana Star. I do a lot of mindset work too. I'm certified in NLP. Um, I was a science of mind spiritual counselor for many years. I have a degree in psychology, and um, mindset's a big part. You know this of of coaching people is helping them over the fear helping them over limiting beliefs, but also having people shift their mindset in the way they're approaching their business and relating to their business. Like, you know, you've got those first two steps. You got started and you've got the hustle. Now it's like to gain momentum, you can't be the bottleneck in your business. And, but you're in a part of your business that you're good at and that you like. So that's great. But at some point, if you really want to scale this where it's millions and millions, you know, you're doing good right now, but you could do a lot better. You've got a lot of potential. So you just reach out if that's of interest to you. Cause I, I would love to work with someone like you because you you've got, you've got the hustle and you're hungry and you're a hunter. And that's a good foundation for me to work with. So what now? You know, what's next for you, Tim? What we're just talking about, you know, looking to scale everything. Hiring Uh, Rayana Starr as your business coach so you can scale your business. Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) Smart move, smart move. And I appreciate that too, Rayana. So that's next. And, you know, still coaching people. Um, You know, kind of got into that by accident, but. So got good at doing that too. So, you know, just want to kind of continue to build on Well, that. it's your way of paying forward too and giving back. Yeah. Right. right. So is it, are, are you just strictly wholesaling or are you, have you done any fix and flips yourself or are you building up a rental portfolio? Where, where um, are you at right now? And where are you going? What's the plan? I have done uh, some fix and flips. Um, I'd rather do wholesaling, but you know, we, we get something with a nice spread on it. Um, we do have a great contract. Uh, uh, it's actually in Columbia, South Carolina. So we're like 90 minutes away. We do a lot of stuff there and we have a great contract there. So we'll do a few fix and flips there. Um, but other than that, it's mostly wholesaling. I haven't started getting into rental properties just yet, but that is, um, that is in the next phase of the plans. That's got to be next and as soon as possible, yeah, because that's where you're going to build the legacy of wealth for yeah, your girls and for you. That's yeah. where at some point, Tim, even though you're good at hustling, at some point, there's going to be a point in your life where you're going to burn out on the hustle and you're going to need, you know, passive income. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's also something I could help you with. So. um what you know just curious tim if you were to jump up on a rooftop and you had a rooftop message and you had a captive audience that was hanging on your every word like hungry for what you had to say what advice would you give them well i'm i'm not gonna say i'm the most religious person but i'll say in the bible right they asked jesus like jesus said in the bible Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness and everything you want should be added unto you. And then the people asked him, where is the kingdom of heaven? And he said, the kingdom of heaven is within. Right. So I say that to say my main, my biggest message to anybody would be how I took that from what Jesus said was to work on yourself, to constantly work on yourself all the time, to do the reading, to do the learning, to do the growing, to do the evolving, the stretching, the becoming a totally different person before i went to prison i was a drug dealer 
I've been arrested 17 times. I don't have a diploma. I've never had a job in my life. Like all I ever known was street activities, doing street stuff my entire life until I went to prison at 26 years old, right? The only thing I did was evolve, grow. I learned, I picked up the books. I read about four to 500 books, podcasts, just the mindset work. So that's my message to anybody to just work on yourself, like evolve as a person. And then everything I wanted was added you know, onto me. I think it's um, Jim Rohn who always says, you can work on your job, you earn a living. You work on yourself, you can earn a fortune. And that's that would be my advice. You can constantly work on yourself, become a better person, be more loving, be more giving, you know, have more integrity, be more, you know, alert person. And everything you want should be added onto you, like like Jesus said in the Bible. I love that. Anything else you want to say that we haven't covered before we wrap up? No, no, I you know, like you tell you know, again, I appreciate you for having me. Um, you know, anybody listening can can follow me on Tim Billions on all social media platforms. I'm mostly on Facebook, but YouTube, Instagram, uh, TikTok, everything. Um, and again, I just appreciate it. I wish the best it, to everyone watching. Much success to everyone watching. And um, you know, don't be afraid to jump in the game. You know, I want to thank you so much for being a guest on my podcast and being so vulnerable and candid and honest about who you are, your story, your history. I think your story is so inspiring. There's a book in there. And I just feel so uh, blessed and honored that you're a guest on my podcast and that you trusted me enough to open up and share your story. I think it's a very inspiring story for people. And I'm glad that we're going to be spreading this into hundreds of other real estate investment groups so that you get the exposure. I just want to thank you so much, Tim. And I, I hope you do take me up on my invitation. I would love to work with you. And everybody else, I just want to say, you know, if Tim can do this, so can you. Think about Absolutely. where he came from and where he got to and the hustle and the tenacity, the perseverance, the resilience, the asking for help, the learning. It's, you know, not being unstoppable. And that's what my this podcast is all about. That's what my group is all about, my community, the unstoppable real estate investor. If you want to join, just look us up and join our group, join our community. It's about this. Tim, it, you're the poster boy for the unstoppable real estate investor. And I just want to thank you so much. It has been such a wonderful start to my day. And uh, you've put me in such a good mood. And I'm so glad we met. It's been such a pleasure to, to spend this time with you. I, I appreciate it. I really do. Yeah. And we're kind of neighbors. We're just a four hour ride yeah. Yeah. on the 26th from each other. So if you're ever in Asheville or I'm ever in Charleston, we'll have to look each other up. So everybody go out there and take action. No more excuses. Go get results. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Talk to you soon, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. You too. Bye.